Hello YouTube! This is my first video. My name is Ted Simpson. I'm a certified Bob Ross instructor and I just thought we'd do a great little painting and it, like I said this is my first full-length video. I'd like to uh, thank all those that have subscribed. This, this one's for you. So what we got going on here today is I got my big brand new 18 by 24 inch canvas. I've already prepared the canvas with a thin even coat of the liquid white and we are good to go. I've got a very limited palette here today. So limited I didn't even put out one of my colors. Last color, the, the last color I need to put out is the first color we need to use. So there we go. And we don't need much of the alizarin crimson today. Just a tiny little bit here at the start. I've got my two inch brush here and I'm just gonna get a little bit of the alizarin crimson. We can always add more, okay? Don't feel the need to load up your brush with too much of this. And we're just going to put a nice little, nice little glow in the sky. Nice little pinkish something or other to warm our sky up. We're going to be doing a great little winter scene. We just need a little bit of a pinkish glow to give the give the painting a little bit of warmth. And you see here I'm just making little crisscross strokes to blend this color out as we go up. And it's mixing with the white that's on there. The more you mix it, the softer and lighter it gets. There we go. No big deal. And right away we can clean our brush as well. Get all that white and pink color out of there. I clean my brush. Sometimes I'm a easel too. But normally just right into a big trash can that I put a piece of pipe in deep inside there. And let's see, let's put in a nice sky here. We got our Prussian blue and midnight black. More black than blue, but we want to have a little bit of little bit of blue in it. Once again, small amount of paint. I'm just sort of beating the paint into the brush. Get it nice evenly distributed and to make sure we don't have too much. So I'm just going to put this paint up here in the corners. Get a little bit extra up here in the corner. And come on across here. Once again, we're going to let that paint mix in. The more you brush across here, the lighter and lighter it gets. Okay? So I'm just going to put a little bit of color in like that. And then I think we'll go ahead and pick up a little bit more color. I'm just going to put some down here. I don't know. I have an idea what I'm going to do here. It's just going to be some shadow. Or if I decide at the last minute, we can put in some water. So I'm just brushing that across and then just allowing that paint once again. Whoop! And I dropped a brush. Boy, this painting's getting off to a great start. Dropping brushes. Forgetting colors. My YouTube career is really taking off. Just gonna blend some of that in there. Anything we don't like, we can turn it into something else. Okay? I'll work my way up here just a little bit. There we go. I'm gonna clean the brush once again. Just so we can get a nice clean one out here. Shake it off. Really wrap it. Want a nice clean dry brush. I'm going to even dab it off on a paper towel here just to make sure that we have a clean brush. Now I can come across my sky here. It's very difficult to blend paint to a nice softness when, when the brush has a lot of paint in it. So I clean the brush as needed. 
You can even knock the excess paint off while you're doing this. Simple little crisscross strokes, and that'll get us a nice soft blend without smearing paint everywhere. And these little light areas I left, you'll get some color pulled into them. But because they don't have much paint to start with, they should remain a little bit lighter than the rest of the sky. And any of these little harsh brush strokes, you can, you can work those out as, as much or as little as you want. Sometimes they'll look like stringy clouds if you leave them in, but it's up to you. It's up to you. Nothing wrong with blending it thoroughly. Crisscross strokes. And you see here, right in this area between the, the blue-black color and the pink, we want that nice transition so we don't know where one color ends and the other begins. There we go. And down here, I'll just make sure that that's blended in and nice and soft too. There we go. There we go, kind of got a crazy pink eye going on in there. We're going to switch right on over to our fan brush. This fan brush is clean and dry. This is a, a number six fan brush. Before I get too much more, my paint wants to slide a little bit, so I'm just going to sit it down. We don't want that slopping over my shoe. Which has happened before. So, let's go ahead and mix up a nice little color here for us to use with our fan brush. A little of the blue, a little bit of the black. Let's go ahead and grab a little bit of that crimson. And a hunk of the white. Okay. Mix those two together. What we're looking for is a darker blue color. Prussian blue, midnight black, a little bit of crimson. That'll uh, purple it up. That's a verb, right? Purple? To purple something? I don't know. We're going to go ahead. Want it a little bit lighter. So I'm going to take a little bit more of the white. And now I can sort of mix it, grabbing a little bit of my color and mixing it into it until I get a color that I'm happy with. Clean your clean your knife. Mix that in. There we go. It's a nice, nice pile of a lightish bluish grayish color. Clean my knife here. Yeah, good gravy. So, as I said, the uh, subscribers that uh, join me from my Reddit streams, I'm really glad that I met you guys, and it's prompted me to get more involved in my, my YouTube career. Of, of which there, there isn't much. So I'm loading a full load of paint into my fan brush. And we're gonna create, oh, we're gonna create some trees here. So I think, let's go ahead and put a nice little tap in there. And I think we're gonna have little upstanding trees. I think I need a little bit more paint in the brush. You gotta load a lot in there. If it doesn't come off right away, try loading a little bit more so the lightest touch allows the brush bristles to bend and it starts to make these lovely little evergreen shapes. Okay? And we can make these as big or as long or as short or as wide as we want. Every time you do this, they turn out a little bit different. So you can have tall, skinny ones, just don't push so hard. You can have wide ones, just push a little harder. And we're just bringing it down 
and just letting them float off there in the sky. Maybe, maybe we'll have a tall, skinny one right here. Using the corner of the brush, we're just bending the bristles here. I'm going to keep these bristles a little bit tighter. Don't hit them too hard. And that'll give us a nice, a nice skinny one but a little bit wider as we come down. See, there we go. Trying to give you a couple of different examples here of all the different kind of trees we can do. And if possible, help you out with a couple of tips and tricks that'll help you begin your painting journey. Okay? As I said at the uh, start of the video, I'm a art instructor. I teach the Bob Ross method to, well, whoever wants to learn, basically. And uh, I go around to different places, hobby stores, parks and rec facilities. I even taught at a restaurant before. <laughs> that was fun. So, as I said here, we're making a little forest almost going on here. I think we're going to try to, let me try to sneak in a little guy right here. He's shorter than just about all the trees. We don't know what he's doing here. Maybe he's, maybe he's in the background. We don't see too much of him. There we go. And you know what? I'm going to try something here. I'm going to grab a little bit more of the white, get a little bit lighter color, a little bit, little bit lighter. Let's see if I can't sneak in something here. Nice short tree, and if it's a little bit lighter, it's going to help with the illusion that it's in the background. Maybe that's not super light, but it's a little bit lighter. Kind of got a little gnarl to it. The old idea here is to just create a nice set of trees that looks interesting. They're not the, the main focus here today. They'll be something to look at when we're done, that's for sure. Alright, now I'm going to take my knife here. We're not going to see a lot of detail, no trunks today. Um, on these in the back, but what we do is we just extend the top a little bit, gives it that little idea of that little top branch. And it also gets a little bit of paint on the knife to draw it up and create the little line. And then we can put in just a couple little sticks and twigs just by cleaning the knife right here between the trees. It creates all this little extra effect here. A little something here and there. And if you want to, look at that. I'm going to turn one of those. I'm going to turn one of those into a little tree. Look at that. He's a mellow one. He's way back there. Not too much going on. Maybe sneak of something in over there. There we go. Now let's go ahead and clean off a little bit of this excess paint. I tell you what, let's go ahead and I'm just going to use one of my clean brushes. I grab it random here. It's a round brush. And I'm just going to smack the bottom of this. All I'm doing is just hitting it. That's where you take out your frustrations in your painting. I'm just hitting it and bringing a little bit of mist right on out the edges. See that? And that's also going to help create the illusion of depth here. There's all sorts of trees and bushes back here and there. As the paint comes off the brush, it gets lighter. It automatically gives the illusion of distance. This kind of goes off into the fog and the mist. Ooh, maybe there's a big one. Okay pick up a little bit more color and it makes it look a little bit 
almost like layers. Put a little bit of a darker one in front, creates a line of bushes that's in front of the previous version. The previous line, I should say. I'm actually going to pick up a little bit of color. So I don't want to I don't want to destroy too much of these trees. And create a little bit of little bit of bushes in front of here. Most of this is just not we're not going to see. I'm just having so much fun. Just want to keep on tapping it. Get out all my all my anger today. There we go. All right. Interesting, right? I got all sorts of things happening here in the background. Maybe a little bit up there, just to close them in as much or as, as little as you want. All right. Got some things happening now. All right, let's get crazy now. We're gonna come in here after I clean up my paint area. I got a little bit of excess color in there. I don't wanna fill in too much. It's all right. I'll just pick it all up and turn it over. There we go. What little paint that's in there. That'll, that'll work for us. So it is kind of nice. I've been streaming on Reddit for quite a while. And the uh, problem is, is I'm always worried about the time. Always worried about how much time I have left. Well, I'm just recording now so I can take as little or a lot of time to, to do this painting. Probably didn't pull enough white down there. So through the magic of editing, I could put more paint if I want. But I tend not to edit my paintings when I was doing some recording before. I just, warts and all type situation. That is a lot of paint. You can see here the bristles have come together in a bit of a sharp edge, a chiseled edge we call it, in the biz. So I'm just going to take my brush here and touch horizontally and push and pull horizontally. And I'll just bring it back to get a nice clean line there. Okay. Load up a little bit more color. I'm going to touch a little bit further and pull again. You want to just pull one straight line I'm not going to stop you. Sometimes I like to pull a couple of lines here. It helps give the impression of the, uh, the forest starting to come into the open. And sometimes it's a straight line. Other times it's a little, little raggedy. Some of these trees grow out a little bit further than others. See, you can change things. And I'm just pulling down some of this snow. Maybe we'll get a little bit of reflected light, and we'll get a little bit of shadow as well. You want to make it brighter? Just grab a little, grab a little white and pull it right on across. No one's going to say nothing. And anything that's left starts to look like shadow. Now, unless you're high noon in the Arctic, you're not going to see a lot of pure bright white. I don't want to snow blind people when we're. Uh, doing a painting here. So there's always going to be some shadow or reflected light. I'm going to grab, I just grabbed the lightest touch of the crimson. Hopefully you'll be able to see this. Just rub a tiny little bit of crimson in here to get a little bit of reflected, there we go, a little bit of reflected sunset there. And if you don't like it, just keep rubbing it. It'll disappear. Just keep going over it with the brush and it'll blend right in, as much or as little as you like. There we go. All right. So the idea with this style of painting is to create layers, the, the illusion of depth and distance. And we're going to push everything back now by making some more, making some objects in front of those. So I'm going to take a little bit of the black and I'm going to mix it into that starting color. A little bit darker now. I've got this little darker color, a little lighter color, just all different shades and values here. I threw a little bit of black into it. 
let's go ahead and bring this tree down right there, just a little bit further into the snow that we just created. Kind of made that little tree disappear. That's all right. We know. We know it's there. I'll try to save a little bit of it. There we go. Come right on down into your snowy area and let that tree just sort of float. A little bit darker color also helps bring the, the illusion that this tree is closer. If you make your trees end, oh, there's a little dog barking. If you make your trees a little bit darker, they're a little bit closer. There we go. Now, before you get too far, we gotta we gotta sit those trees down somewhere. And I say there's a little bit of Maybe grass and sticks and twigs and we, who knows what else. So let's create the illusion here. These trees are sitting a little bit closer, but they're also up on a little bit of a hill. So I'm just going to pull that color down right there. There we go. A little bit of shadow behind these trees, or in front of these trees, I should say. Get a nice bit of color, pull it right on through. There we go. And right just that easy, we create the illusion that these trees are a little bit closer and they're up on another plane, a little hill. Okay, same thing with this. This time we're just gonna bring this one down, touch, bring a little bit of the color down. Okay, and maybe a little bit of color this way. There we go. Look at that. Now we got a big old hill that that tree's sitting on. Oh, a little extra shadow. A little happy accident there. A little bit of color now. A little bit of color. We don't know what's going on. Maybe something's poking its way out there. There we go. All right, now we're getting some depth and distance happening. All right. Now, right here, I'm not super thrilled with that area, but that's the great tip, is that if you don't like something, cover it with something else. And we're gonna, we're gonna create a, a little bit of focus to our painting here now by creating a, a big old structure. I say this is a so we're going to make a nice big barn, okay? And to make this barn, we get to scrape all the work that we already did, okay? This barn is going to be, oh, it's going to be pretty big. So I'm going to maybe create it just over here. And the, what we do is we just want to scrape out a little bit of a shape first. Get all that excess paint off the canvas and just draw the general shape. It's, we're, we're builders now. We get to decide how big this barn is going to be. So let's go ahead and scrape off the excess paint. Now we got a little eave on the other side. Something like that. And the angles that you scrape help determine that three-dimensional look that we're going for. Okay, just scraping, scraping, let that eave hang out a little bit. This will be the face of the barn. I gotta, I gotta stop saying cabin here, but I say we're gonna make, let's make it even bigger. So I'm just gonna extend this roof line out and then make the barn a little bigger. If it's too square, it looks more like a shed or a cabin. But if it's nice and big, that'll help give the idea of a barn shape. Okay, a little bit bigger in the front. 
smaller as we go further away. Okay. Excess paint, we're just trying to get rid of it. That just makes applying the next layer a little easier. I always make the barn a little bit bigger than it needs to be so we can do our, our barnectomy. So, our barn, let's see, we can clean up some of this color now. Maybe we'll use it here. So I'm just going to set it right there. Nice little transition color. Lots of the lights and the darks all mixed. So we can come back to that. And we need Van Dyke Brown. I pull this out nice and flat. Flat is like a sheet of paper. Okay. And that allows us to come in, touch, pull down, cut away, and get that nice little roll of paint. Okay, we're going to create the back of our eave here first. I'm just pulling inward. Okay, simple enough. Now, this is uh, just a little bit extra right there. Not laying it on too thick, but I want to create a nice smooth line here. And we can always come back, load more paint on the knife. I'm going to show you a little trick here. If we want a nice, clean, straight line, I just line it up, touch, and pull in. Touch and pull in. Nice, clean line. We make those clean lines wherever we need to. You know, if I want to make sure that I'm keeping myself straight, you just turn the knife in there, just like that. Straight up and down. You want to make a leany barn? You can do that too, but we're going to try to keep these, uh, keep this barn upright. All I'm doing is loading these small rolls of paint and touching and pulling down. Okay, putting on a background layer of brown. Doesn't have to be ten miles thick. Just a nice clean layer here. We can always pull some of that down. If you get a little too much on there, don't roll any more on your knife. Just use what you have, just like that. And it's all right if there's a couple little spaces here and there. We're going to be covering that up. So don't feel the need that it has to be a perfect solid color. That's not the kind of painting we're doing here. We're making, we're making a, a general shape, and your eye will fill in all the rest. So, I went ahead there and touched my uh, sharp line there, so let me rebuild that. There we go. Building a grandpa barn here. Big old barn off in the wilderness. And every time you do these, they're always a little bit different. That's why I'm, I'm doing this one here today. I need a little bit of barn, barn practice. A little bit of barn practice. This barn's got a little bit of a something to it. Every barn is a little bit different. We're just trying to keep the, uh, the perspective right here. So let me go ahead and just bring this down. I want a little bit extra so I can reshape my perspective, the angle of the front versus the angle of the side. That's a big old barn, that's for sure. So let's create, let's create a, a highlight color. We're going to use a little bit of dark sienna, a little bit of that brown, and some white. Now the trick here is, is to leave this unmixed. Look at that, that's exactly what we're going for. Lots of different shades of brown and sienna. I tell you what, take a little bit of the alizarin crimson, pull that through. Look at that, let me, let me zoom in there a little bit. Nice, interesting variation. Hopefully you saw that. Perfect. Now, what I'm going to do is I cut a nice roll of paint right off there. Come up here. Remember your eave. Don't go all the way up to the top here. Remember your eave and touch and just let the knife drag down. and Let the paint come off where it wants to. Every time you do this, you get a nice fresh roll of paint. Be very careful that you don't over mix it or else all that color just disappears. We want to try to save some of those dark lines where 
the the highlight didn't touch that helps make the the impression of old wood but just pull on down here and if you do smear it it just starts getting darker and darker and you can go over it with a lighter color once again if you like I'm gonna clean up my edge of my eave here always helps to have a nice clean roll of paint when you pull there there we go right there and the more you mix it the more chance of mud so be careful we don't want to make mud today I come right on up to the top here on this side there we go so we got our nice little eave hanging off just gonna create a little bit I think I uh, had myself a little happy accident there so let's go ahead and make that eave just a hair bigger just covers that right up perfect now for the background the back side of the cabin I just want to add a little bit of the Van Dyke to my highlight color get a nice little roll of paint maybe a bigger one there we go and we're going to highlight the back side here and it's going to be darker because it's it's off in the shadow a little bit so it's not going to be as bright which also helps make it look like there's the front and then there's the side helps with the perspective so there's a, a few different ways here we can create uh, the, the illusion of boards one way is to get a little roll of paint nice little roll of paint and just make some little vertical touches here and there with the straight Van Dyke Brown that'll help create the illusion there of the, the separating boards this is an old barn right so there's gonna be gonna be some gaps or something around there and then again the straight Van Dyke Brown add some here and there you don't have to like get out the measuring tape or anything just touch sometimes touching fast works a little better little touches we're just making indications and illusions here now this is a barn so we need a big door for the uh, the horses to get in they're all hanging out inside right now we got to give them a way to get out okay we're gonna take a nice I better even get a nicer a nice bigger roll of paint here and we're just going to touch and pull down boom there's a nice big door I can create a, a sharper line here if I want make it a little bit bigger and just pull down and make it nice and smooth there we go I'm gonna take a tiny bit of liquid white that's what we use to prime the canvas with and I'm gonna mix a mix it a little bit with titanium white about oh half and half very light touch and I'm just going to touch very small amount with the edge of the blade there we go just gives a little bit of a separator there highlights that door makes it look better we don't want a thick blob there that'll kind of ruin the perspective so just a very thin line there and let's see what else are we gonna do we got oh we need a roof definitely need a roof I'm gonna pull this down just as we did before clean knife cut a roll of paint and let's go ahead and line this up a little bit get a nice pull inward this will help give us a nice clean pull of snow on this on this old barn here nice clean line you see that and we can go around all the way if we want to let's go ahead and just touch and pull it's 
really helpful to have a super clean knife that allows us to load the knife properly. Okay, and if you got to scrape it up and pull it out again, no one's going to stop you. It's more important here to have a nice roll of paint on the knife than it is in trying to finish in 25 minutes like Bob did. Touch, pull it on down. Here, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to draw a nice little line by touching and pulling up or over. Look at that. The trick to these structures, practice. I've, I've made some pretty funky roof lines before. And you see if you push too hard with too little paint, you'll get these streaks. So the idea is just pull it down. There we go. I think I'm running out of paint. I'm really going to need some more here in a moment. And if you drift into the brown, that's all right. Sometimes we get some dirty snow on there. Oh, and I got a little hair. Pick it up. I better go ahead and just add some more color. Alright, ran out of paint, use the rest of the tube. Nice clean roll of paint here. We can add our favorite little ends to this structure. You see here, the more I'm messing with it, the more mud I create down at the bottom here. So, just going to try to bring this down, add layer upon layer of snow. There we go. This one might take a little bit longer to dry because I'm I'm layering it on a little bit thicker. There we go. Maybe it's a little bit warmer here and it's getting a little bit of a of an icicle hanging. I must have a fire or something well insulated. Ooh, there I go smearing the paint again. Try this once more, get a nice clean pull. There we go. Good enough. Sometimes I get uh, a little bit picky and I keep going at it. So, I'm going to take a step back here and let's go ahead and nip off, do our barnectomy. The rare barnectomies. And then bring this one over and let's just trim off, keep our perspective, there we go, keep our perspective tight, but that's alright if we don't, we'll just clean up anything we don't like, there we go, that looks like a big old barn, except we need a little tiny bit on our eave, so a little bit of the titanium white and just a touch, just a touch of the liquid white and we're going to put a little bit up on top here. Beep. 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 A little bit dirty, that's all right. A little bit of a roof indication there, the other side of the roof I should say. There we go. And brother, we have ourselves a barn. So let's go ahead and clean up the bottom edge. Pulling some of that color out. Just a little bit of the white. Touch, pull away. Touch, pull away. 
And look at that, we're doing a couple of different things here. We're creating a little plane that the barn is sitting on. A little bit, a little bit of a hill. Okay, and we can start to see the, the lay of the land a little bit. A little bit more snow. Let's go ahead and pull some all away on the other side. Look at that. Maybe we've got a big hill coming in. mess with it, the more uh, opposing streaks you put in there. And those streaks, we need them. They're a good friend here. We need them to help create the lay of the land. So it doesn't have to be super smooth, but they all kind of have to follow that direction there of the, of the land formation that we're looking for. And to show you here, look at this. We can just create another one just by pulling a little bit of paint on the brush we create these new formations here okay. and by doing that makes it look natural makes it look interesting we get to see where in nature all the little lands and hills and structures are. Oh, where all the grass would be if this was a, a springtime painting. Just by pulling some of these light areas over the top, we get to see that. The lay of the land here. Just adding in the color and just brushing it away. Now, I say here, let's create something here. Let's create a, a little bit more of foreground and interesting features that we got going on here. I'm just going to knock the excess paint out of my brush, the uh, fan brush here. Let's go ahead and let's create a nice color. Okay, we're going to come in here with our phthalo blue, I'm sorry, Prussian blue, black, a little bit of brown. I'll tell you what, let's use the rest of our crimson. Okay, we're going to make a nice pile here of a very dark color. No titanium white this time. Now we're going to have some trees in the foreground. And they'll look like they're in the foreground because they're nice and dark. Clean out the knife again, and let's just mix in with our fan brush and any residual lighter color just all gets covered up with the dark. Okay. I say maybe this uh, maybe this hill he needs his own tree. Oh, I think we're gonna make a. We're gonna make a monster here. Nice big old tree. We're just gonna do the same thing, just in a in a slightly bigger scale here. We're gonna tap in darker color. And this tree's gonna grow with us. We're gonna put in lots of branches here. And because this tree is so big, we might have to load the brush a few more times. And this is, should be a slightly thinner color than the uh, titanium white, not as firm. So the paint, properly loaded, should come right on off here. Oh, we're making a big tree, that's for sure. Coming right on down the barn. Now it's right up on the hill here. He was behind the barn, now he's in front. And maybe he's got himself a, a little baby friend right here. Grew from a little seedling or pine cone, I guess. He ain't so big yet, but he'll be protected by uh, this mama tree. Okay, got one there. Now 
once we get a little bit of that in, we're going to come over just as we did before. We'll create a little, a little trunk like formation just to give that nice little stock. And let's see here, I got a little bit of this dark brown color here that we used for the, the highlight. Maybe we'll put a little, little idea of the trunk in here. Maybe we'll see a little bit, just a little bit. I've got another fan brush here. And I'm going to go into a little bit of the liquid white. Let's put it right on down here and a little bit of the titanium white. We're just going to mix these two together on the brush. Grab a tiny bit of the phthalo blue. And we're going to make a nice highlight color for these evergreens that we got going on that we just created. Loading in some white, some liquid white, and just a touch of the phthalo blue. All right. Now, coming up here, we're just going to touch in the same way we did before bending the bristles and allowing the, the brush to do the work for us. We're going to give these nice wintry trees a little bit of highlight. And you may need to mix a little bit more. I'm going to grab a little bit of liquid white, a little bit of the titanium white, a tiny bit of the phthalo blue. And this tree down here, he's going to have a little bit of highlight on him as well. Good. Now, we'll take our two inch brush here with our liquid white, I'm sorry, titanium white, and let's pull a little bit of that color out. And once again, we're doing multiple things here. We're creating a little shadow, we're creating the lay of the land. And bringing the rest of our land together. Look at that, all these different things here just by pulling a little bit of that color down. Look at that. I think maybe the land's starting to flatten out here a little bit. The land's starting to flatten as we come towards the foreground. You can add as much formations and, and all this different stuff here that you like. Maybe there's another one right there. As I said, that uh, blue that we put on there could have been water. We could have put a nice little pond there. But today we just chose to keep it a nice, a nice little snowbank. We can even use, the great thing about this method, is we can use the fan brush to draw these in as well and create the next plane. So, what I want to try is a little bit, knock the excess, excess color out of my brush, the fan brush putting in that background tree color, with most of that color off, I can just take and create a little bit of a path coming through here. Just putting a little bit of color right down into the foreground here. Make a path a little bit bigger. And let's see here. I'm going to come across it and let's just see if we can lighten it up a little bit. We can highlight that path by using the brush that we used to highlight. Now the more you go over it, the more it mixes with the color that's underneath. In this case, the, the white and liquid white even. And it just starts getting softer and softer. that fan brush a little bit. Now we want to clean that because to do that nice blend it's best to have a clean brush. A little bit of a 
clean up here. Got a little bit of white on the brush. Look at that. We can change things, sit that path down, blend those edges. Soft and silky. Okay, good. Now, I think it's a little bit, a little bit empty. Still a little bit empty. It's all just very, very clean here. Maybe, maybe we'll add something. Let's go back here. Got all this excess paint here. So let's clean up my palette a little bit and see what we got. We got all this excess dark color. We can add bushes, more trees if we want. In fact, I think that's a good idea. That's how I, uh, that's how I work sometimes. You never know exactly, uh, exactly what you want to do here until you do it. So let's go ahead, let's add, let's add something nice right over here. Create the nice leafy something or other. Not all, not all trees lose everything in the winter. So we can just add some, add some interesting things down here and cover up, and maybe cover up part of that path. Just taking my brush, tapping some paint on, and tapping it off. There we go. All these layers immediately. And let's take our script liner brush. And I'm just going to use a little bit of the Mineral Spirits paint thinner. Get a little bit excess uh, color I had there, and maybe just pull in, pull out some branches, little stick things. Maybe we'll see some. We can even take this and pull out a couple of these little needleless branches off off on our trees as well, just on the ones that are closest to us. We wouldn't really see; they'd be too far away to see down there. And then, with a little bit of paint thinner and color, we can create the illusion of all sorts of sticks and grasses and fine little details here. Put them on a little bit before. You can do a little bit after as well. It's up to you. Little grassy things coming out here. Change up the color. I can even grab some of this thalo blue color. Let's thin some of that out and see what that does for us. Just rolling the brush, loading the paint. And we can create all sorts of excess lighter ones too. All as many of these details as you want. We even have a little kind of coming off, maybe poking through the snow here and there. I would suggest washing that brush as soon as you're done. You don't want the paint drying up in there, if you can help it. So, I need a tiny bit of the titanium white. Sorry for that. And brand new tube out of the box even. To the white and we're going to take our round brush that we used earlier and I'm going to tap a little bit of the titanium white and liquid white together and we're going to make a nice little highlight color and the idea is that these are little ice covered branches So we tap this lighter, thinner color. And it should pop right off our brush onto the canvas. Little rows, little uh, layers here once again. A 
building these in clumps. Little ones, little clumps. Not just hitting it at random. But putting these clumps a little bit at random. Building our way forward if possible. Always build forward. It makes life easy for you. It allows you to cover up your mistakes too. Tap one little bush, reload, tap another, drop down, and add the next layer. And just like that, we've got this little uh, tree shape, little bush shape. We can also add a little bit down over here if we like. Change things until you, you're satisfied. There we go. So something like that is a very easy and simple painting that anyone can do, you know? And once again, I want to thank you all for anyone who's watched the entire painting. This will be up here on my YouTube channel. And hopefully there'll be many, 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 many more. I like to sign with my initials and the year. Almost made a little heart for the zero. And I thank you all, and I will see you again. Happy painting.